out there, Wolfpack? This is Mr. Dark Phoenix here with Superman, Batman, and Spider-Man bringing you guys some more Teen Wolf Rewind, my review show where I take 5A, review it week by week like it was 5B, and then if this timing goes correctly, which I really hope it does, by the time I'm finished with this rewind, Teen Wolf 5B will come out that next week. So, with all these few weeks coming, I cannot wait for it. Please hit that subscribe button to not miss anything. I don't want you guys to miss out on 5B when I add it to TV time. And I want you guys to miss out on anything regardless anyway. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, please, and thank you. And tell your awesome Teen Wolf friends. And let's just jump right on in to this episode of Teen Wolf. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen it, but it's an old episode, so I think you might have seen it. But I'm just saying it just in case. Let's jump right on in the Teen Wolf. Ouroboros. There is no other way I'm taking this besides a Resident Evil Wesker reference. So, Ouroboros, in less than five minutes, I will reach Earth's atmosphere and do complete global penetration. Yeah, Resident Evil stuff, we can do that. Found your sword, impaled at a person on Scott's d um, d d stuff in his kitchen. Lord knows how that happened, but that's an awful thing to walk home to, don't you think? It's like, oh no! This poor girl! How am I supposed to cook dinner now? So look, look, that looks, that looks, look, looks like a light for takeout. It's like, Scott, I'm getting takeout. You're not here, but I'm getting takeout. So, let's just do that. Babies at the doctor, they don't want their shots, and they're being misbehaved. Maybe if the Dread Doctors offered them a lollipop at the end, they'd be more reluctant to behave. I'd be like, listen, I'm getting all this, am I, am I getting a lollipop and not an ass whooping? Can we somehow make that happen? Anybody? And then I get my ass whooped, so it's okay. I don't have to worry about nothing. Uh, Scott learns invasive claws. That scene was so great. I love how... It's getting so close to Scott losing his mind. Like, Scott is feeling really helpless. He's got asthma again, which is like back to season one times. And it's like he's being dehumanized? Because he's because it wouldn't be human. It's, it's kind of humanizing him, but it's also proving that just because you're the alpha doesn't make you, like, the ultimate strongest person. That like you still have your problems like everybody else. And he's going insane because he wants to help everybody. He's feeling like he's losing the pack and all of that. So, I like what Tyler Posey is doing with Crazy Scott. Like, I really do. Like, for up until this time, he's always been, like, you know, shy and nerdy at first. Then he became, the alpha became really strong. And now he's going, like, back down to, like, season one stats where, like, he's nervous and he doesn't know what to do. And I like that. I Kudos, damn it. Big ass kudos for that, because I commend you for pulling that off. Oh, man. And, yeah, isn't it funny how you gotta have the Japanese girl read it backwards, like manga? I was like, she's like, I can't read it. Maybe I have to read it backwards. Yeah, because she's the Japanese fox girl. And the Japanese got the manga you gotta read backwards, because that's how they do stuff, so... I'd have been that friend to think of that first. I'd have been like, hey, why don't you try reading the book backwards? Like manga. And then it would have been like, oh, that's bad. Well, it helped the plot, didn't it? So I, in turn, helped save the world. You're welcome. So, sus boy found them. Oh, of course. You know exactly where to go get them. And you know exactly how to stop them. God. You're so evil. But you're so so attractive to look at, and I hate that. I couldn't have been with him on the show, because I'd have been like, I hate you, but you're pleasant to look at, and I love him. I can't help it. He's like the villain you love to hate. Not like Joffrey, like you hate Joffrey, but like Ramsay almost, where like, you know he's, you know, well he's not at Ramsay level, thank God, but it's like, you hate him, but you want to know what he's going to do next. So he intrigues you, and you love him because of that, so... There you go. Good job, Cody Christian. Just good ass job. And we learn it's Parrish taking them bodies to the to the evil tree. <laughs> to that tree that it was not there anymore that births all the supernatural crap. Still no word on what exactly is gonna happen when Parrish's mission's all said and done, but that's why we have shows that come on next week. And the desert wolf is gonna kill her daughter. Why? We have no idea. What's your motivation for killing your daughter? 
It's like, I'm gonna kill that bitch. Why? What did she do to you? You tried to kill her and her fake parents, and now you want to kill her again, so... That's probably gonna be the season six big storyline, where they're gonna take on the Desert Wolf. Again, it sounds like a song from their album. Like I said in Strange Frequencies that that's the name of the album, just Desert Wolf sounds like a song that should be on Dylan O'Brien and Tyler Posey's love album. I don't know, I'm so crazy. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, comment if you haven't, subscribe if you haven't, rate, subscribe, share with all your awesome friends, and always remember, after good times and bad times, remember to geek out and enjoy your lives, and I'll catch you guys next time for more Teen Wolf Rewind.